welcome back to Author Mastery Insights. I am unreasonably excited about this conversation and the book that we're going to be talking about. Look at this. Look at this tone. It's an incredible book, Dream Wellness. And we're going to talk with Dr. Brian Stensler about this book, about the epic uh, investment, not only in this book and what it's going to do for the health and lives of families, children in the community. Dr. Brian, welcome. So excited for this conversation. Thanks, Marcus. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, it's going to be amazing. First, for those not familiar with the incredible contribution, not just this book, but to the chiropractic profession that Dr. Brian has uh, you know, been able to give. He's not only a best-selling author of Dream Wellness, The Five Keys to Raising Kids for a Lifetime of Physical and Mental Health. He received his Doctor of Chiropractic in 1998 from Life University. And in 1999, he earned his Master's Degree in Sports Health Science, also from Life. And additionally, he uh, is a certified ULT facilitator and corporate consultant and provides wellness and lifestyle coaching and consulting for individuals, families, and businesses around the globe. He is the co-founder of Dream Wellness and has owned and operated numerous wellness centers in New York and California, where he has helped thousands of families achieve their health and wellness goals and has a passion for working also with athletes and has spent many years providing chiropractic services to the U.S. Open Golf Championship wellness team by adjusting the players, caddies, and other members of the organization. Early in his career, you know, Dr. Brian was an adjunct neurology instructor at the New York College of Health Professionals, so brings great authority, knowledge, and expertise to the conversation. And he travels the world as guest speaker at conferences and colleges and lectures at numerous businesses and schools and civic organizations as a health and wellness expert and has been featured on television and radio shows around the world, multiple podcasts and events such as this. So I'm so excited. But the reason we got you here, Dr. Brian, is when I picked up this book, the first thing I noticed was not only did it speak to the heart of the principles of, of health and wellness for families and children, it gave such a profound and powerful depth of insight into the whole dynamic of, of living in a way that provides for an extraordinary life for kids, for families. And I think it's so beautifully and powerfully, elegantly put together. But I'm going to put it over you to share the message of this book. So what, tell me, what is Dream Wellness? You know, dream wellness is essentially the chiropractic lifestyle, something that I thought that every chiropractor lived, um, but through my different uh, travels in different leadership positions, you know, I was president of the California Chiropractic Association, and I'm currently uh, second vice president of the Congress of Chiropractic State Associations, um, which is where all the state association presidents go to learn best practices. And as I surround myself by chiropractors around the country and even around the world at different events, I'm like, wow, the chiropractic lifestyle that I learned at life and going in dynamic essentials and through my mentors, uh, I just thought every chiropractor lived this certain lifestyle, but they don't. They're like, oh, why don't you eat stuff with high fructose corn syrup in it? Why do you get your spine checked on a regular basis? I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I thought I was writing this book for the general public. I'm not writing it just as much for a good portion of our profession. But for people like you, Marcus, you know, you know the chiropractic lifestyle. I know the crowd that you that you run in, um, and I'll tell you, you know, I've been looking at ways, you know, 23 plus years in my chiropractic career is how could I bring the principle of chiropractic about avoiding the causes of subluxation, you know, to the general public and making the chiropractic premise a part of everyone's household vernacular, if you will. And so that's where I came up with the idea of DREAM, D-R-E-A-M, the five keys to a wellness lifestyle, being diet, relaxation, exercise, being an adjustment and mental wellness. And so that's what my wellness centers were always, they were called DREAM Wellness. And we offered other services other than chiropractic. Those were my screenings. Someone would come in for massage. We did a scan on them to check the nervous system first. They came in for massage. They came in for acupuncture. They came in for personal training, a cooking class, whatever it was, we would always do scans on them to assess the function of the nervous system. And so I taught the principles of dream for such a long period of time that I'm like, I've got to get this out there because chiropractors need to share this message with their communities. And I need to just go mainstream with this book. And that's why I chose not to put the word chiropractic in the title. If I did that, no one would buy it except for chiropractors. So instead, you know, it's got to be like that Trojan horse type of thing. Talk all about the chiropractic lifestyle and then dedicate a good portion of the book somewhere in the last two thirds of the book and saying, by the way, everything we're talking about here 
is that lifestyle within chiropractic to help you make sure that you stay subluxation free, meaning having your nervous system function at its highest level possible. I think, you know, if we, if we go back to the origins of chiropractic and we, and we, we realize when we talk tick, we usually talk about the three T's, the traumas, the toxins, the thoughts. You've taken all of that, but you've, you've expanded on, on it in a way that, and, and I love the way that particularly with the, you know, the, the thoughts or the auto suggestion um, element, you brought the, the mental health aspect to, and the relaxation, you've got the, the things that you need to do to unwind your nervous system, but also the thoughts you need to have um, and the, the way you need to respond and adapt to stressors around you and the mental framework that creates that, plus the lifestyle changes. So you're giving a created a powerful, holistic paradigm shift and viewpoint that allows the practitioner reading this book to be reminded of the truths that they know and understand and ideally would embed within their lifestyle and their practice education. And then you've delivered in a totally accessible, in-depth framework for the patient who reads this, for the person in the public who may not have even come across chiropractic to start saying, well, I know I need to get my lifestyle in order. And these are timeless principles, um, valuable levels of understanding and then all of a sudden there's this realization and say but there is it's not just lifestyle it's about making sure that i am living interference free so that i can express my potential and all those lifestyle factors are magnified you've elegantly put it together so i want to know what your secret was i mean hopefully every chiropractor watches this understands the three t's understands the role of adjustment and removing subluxation but to put it together what was your way and method and approach of saying i understand the chiropractic lifestyle and the, and the chiropractic adjustment. How do I frame that so people get the big idea? It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my personal and professional career uh, because I've had it in me as so many of us do, but to be able to get it out and to verbalize it and to get it into written word, it was really hard because even having the acronym of DREAM for the past 20 plus years that I was in practice, you know, because I came up with, you know, I trademarked DREAM before I even graduated from chiropractic college, but I still couldn't get it out and explain it the way that it needed to be explained. And I think that, you know, I've been very blessed with great mentorship, you know, throughout my entire professional career. Uh, so that's helped a lot. I've gone to a lot of great seminars and a lot of prayer. I really think that it was my prayer and meditation. I think that God really worked through me in his divine way, because I don't think I could have written this book, you know, without him. I, I mean, he was the first person I acknowledged in the book. That's not something I would normally do, it's, you know, but I, I just feel like it was just driven in a certain direction, because as I always explain the five keys to the wellness lifestyle, the five facets of health, that the way I used to refer to it, uh, it was kind of like, well, how do I put this all together? How do I package it? And ultimately it's those three T's, right? The toxin, traumas, and thoughts or chemical, physical, and emotional stressors. I use it both ways because not everyone's going to get the, get at the three T's. Uh, and basically it is those, those chemical, physical, and emotional stressors that cause dis-ease, dysfunction, and subluxation in our lives. And so that's why I always talk about the D-R-E-M right? The diet relaxation exercise and mental wellness. When you live those in balance, then you will avoid or neutralize those chemical, physical, and emotional stressors. So you stay in adjustment. And so that's the whole idea is when, you know, I paint the picture of when you're in adjustment, life is amazing because I mean, what really bad can happen when you're in adjustment? I mean, you're even less likely to have a traumatic experience because you're going to think clearly you're not going to get into a car accident as likely, you know, like everything is, is better when you're in adjustment, but how do we stay there? And all those years that I practiced chiropractic, I never did anything other than adjust people. You know, I didn't do massage. I didn't do nutrition. I didn't do therapies and I don't judge chiropractors that do as long as they give the chiropractic message. I always talked about the subluxation and what causes the subluxation. And then I would give them all the information. Uh, and that's why I really feel that the information from the book, you know, it's funny because, you know, people ask, how has this book impacted my practice? Well, I actually got the book published several months after I finished practicing. So, you know, I moved from San Diego where I had three wellness centers you know, my three offices in San Diego to Florida, you know, to escape all the madness of California, um, which I know you had to deal with quite a bit out there in Australia. But uh, yeah, I mean, I escaped from California in July and the book released August 18th. 
and I haven't been in practice. So I talked to my wife and I'm like, you know, if I ever went back into practice, I feel like it would be so much easier because I wouldn't even have to tell them anything. I just say, here's the book, you know, read chapter 512, read chapter 619, you know, whatever it is. And they would just get the message. So, um, you know, I, ju I just feel that everything was just divine the way that God just helped me put it together, put the dream together and put it with the three T's and what it is that we do as chiropractors. So we're not constantly just hammering nails, you know, into the wood and stuff like that. Like we actually want to keep people away from needing the adjustment. Our goal should be to have everyone coming in, getting checked and nobody being subluxated. Of course, that's going to be a really difficult thing with all the chemical, physical, emotional stressors in life. But wouldn't that be great if everyone that came in was clear? So something to strive for, right? Beautiful vision for humanity. And, and talking about the vision that, um, that, that it brings to humanity, and we, we know the gift that chiropractic offers and the impact it can have. When you bring these elements of lifestyle and you've done this in practice and, and ideally, you know, people who you know, grab a copy of this book and say, I can expand my impact and my influence by ensuring that I'm you know, delivering the education. What type of a change to patients who are receiving a, a level of care that is inclusive of lifestyle change? How do they not only respond and adapt from a chiropractic perspective, but what type of conversations are they having with you when you're saying, let's look at these factors? How, how are they experiencing care when there is a lifestyle element incorporated? Well, I mean, my gosh, you know, we, we just look at the five keys to the light, to wellness lifestyle, right? So when they're not well adjusted, it's hard for them to exercise, right? So you get them an adjustment. Now they could exercise better, not only because maybe if they had pain or didn't have pain, but heck, the nerve flow going to the biceps has to be optimized. And so if you have issues with the nerve root there, you're not going to get the best workout you can get out. So now they're getting into better shape. They're losing weight. They're getting better relationships with their family, you know, with their spouses and their kids. Uh, you know, you just see amazing things happen. Look, you know, my practice was filled with miracles and I, I air quote miracles because I expect these things to happen. When someone's subluxation free, you expect the best possible outcomes. But then when you throw in the lifestyle changes, they're holding their adjustments longer and I don't need to see them as often and they get more excited about it and they're going to refer many more people. So it's just an, an amazing, you know, it's like the safety pin, right? Right. The safety pin cycle. It's, it's just like that. It's like the cause and effect. If you reduce the causes of subluxation and then you reduce the subluxation, you're really setting somebody up for success. And it's kind of like, you know, teaching someone a fish rather than, you know, just giving them uh, feeding them the fish. So it's one of those. The content of the book. Um, and again, I love, and, and I think everyone, go grab a copy of it, because if you're not as familiar with this as, as I believe you probably should be, if not already are, it just, it's like a course on wellness. And do you find that in your practice, have you been, notwithstanding, as you said, you wrote this book post-practice, but in practice, were you sharing the information that people need to improve their, I mean, you have practitioners there. Are they getting this level of education? Let's look at your exercise. Let's look at your diet. Let's support your emotional, mental well-being. Let's teach you how to relax. Was that information flowing into the practice members so that they could make that lifestyle change? It was, but not through me. It was through the other providers in my office. It was through the massage therapist, the acupuncturist, the personal trainer, uh, the, you know, the, the lifestyle relationship coach. I mean, it was all the other people that I had in my wellness center that was giving them the information. I would give my, I started my, or, my new practice members with an orientation. I always did a wellness workshop and I laid the foundation as to why they need to do all of these things and participate with this in life. And this way you get to see me for less. You don't need to see me as often if you do all these other things. And they listened. And so that was the beautiful thing is I really got to focus on the nervous system. Now that I'm not in practice, I got to finish the book and I got to get this information out there. And now I'm doing all these trainings and podcast interviews and everything else, which, you know, as a chiropractor, I, I never could do because I was too busy adjusting, which was the best thing in the world because every chiropractor needs to be spending their time adjusting, not talking about wellness. This is one of the main reasons why I wrote the book is so that chiropractors and other lifestyle types of healthcare providers can give their patients and their clients this book and let them make the changes that they need to make. And if they take the dream score, it's even more powerful because with the dream score, they get to finish the book in about an hour if they don't want to read all 350 pages. A couple of things to stand out. I think it's really important there. 
is there's an interesting paradox you highlighted. You know, you were so busy adjusting people, you had this wonderful practice and these you know, people around you supporting the program, transforming lives. So the practitioners who are not achieving the successes that they would like for those not necessarily making the impact that they know is possible in and through chiropractic. You've just, I think, given away a secret and a key there is, you know, get them understanding the chiropractic lifestyle, get them making positive health and lifestyle choices, and they will come into your practice because you're offering them a gift of health and wellness. And then from the foundation, if you want a busier practice, start reminding them of the chiropractic principle and how the lifestyle actually integrates with it. As you said, you will gym better when you're well adjusted. You will make better health choices. Your nervous system will respond better. So if you want to grow your practice, bring a lifestyle element to it to ensure that people are making choices consistent with the outcomes they want, deliver the care to magnify and maximize that, and you become the go-to health expert in your area. Sounds like that's exactly what you were doing, Brian, by having an expanded team to create a center for wellness, a hub for people to come to, to live their lives and thrive. Is, would that be a rare, fair assessment? I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, that's what we're there for is to help make people's lives better. We have the opportunity to be our community's hero. We don't have to save everyone's lives with our hands. You know, if they're doing all the right things outside of our offices, they shouldn't need as much from us. We're there to coach them and to steer them in the right direction. So that's it, become your community's hero, turn them on to the lifestyle, and then be there to serve them when they need to be served, when, they, when they're subluxated, not based on how they feel, but based on how they function. And that's why every chiropractor needs to be able to assess the nervous system, because we know that pain is about 5% of the nervous system. I never in 23 years of practice ever advertised a single patient visit or practice member visit on somebody referring to pain. You know, I never did a single ad. I never even advertised, but nothing on my website ever said anything about pain either. That's not what it's about. It's about function and about how your body is doing, not how it's feeling. Skin care is the reason they stay in care. If you want to start them off in pain, once that's resolved, they, uh, they don't have a real focus um, to remain in care. And that's why when you look at the wellness um, title within this, and, and this is the last question I want to really move into, you, you did something I think so beautiful because it's not only dealing with the wellness lifestyle, you, you spoke about raising children, lifting the bar for families about the health and wellness. So how has this been, you know, notwithstanding that you're not in practice, but from the people that you're speaking to, the conversations you're having, how has this been received, emphasizing this epidemic of um, child health challenges that we're facing uh, in, the, in the world? This is the real epidemic or well, the real pandemic is chronic health um, interruption to our children, to our, to our adolescents. But you've directly addressed that within this book. What type of response are people having to that? Well, they're very appreciative, which is a good thing because it's, it was very in your face. You know, it's like, I think I opened up the book by saying something like, I want my child to grow up obese and be riddled with all these chronic health problems and no parent ever, right? And so I'm thinking like, do I wanna take that out? Do I not wanna start that strong? And I'm like, no, I wanna make a point. I wanna make a statement because one of kids' favorite games to play is follow the leader. So if kids are gonna play follow the leader, then parents darn well better be the leader that they want their kids to follow. And so parents need to start making these changes in their lives and let their kids see what they're doing and stop with the cigarettes, the alcohol, the drugs, the not exercising, the sedentary lifestyle and start taking action because, I mean, we all know what happened with COVID. I mean, over a million people, uh, you know, we know that the vast majority of the people that passed away from COVID, not all, but the vast majority had another chronic health disease, you know, such as obesity, high blood pressure, right? Diabetes. And those are lifestyle based, most of them. You know, you could blame it on, on genetics all you want, but like, as uh, you know, doc, Dr. Chester always says, uh, you know, you can't blame it on bad luck, bad germs and bad genes. Sometimes it's bad choices. And so that's one of the things that we have to be willing to do is be in the face of the parents and say, hey, if you don't want kids with lots of chronic problems, why don't you stop showing them how to create chronic problems at home? Stop with the fast food and all those other things because COVID is not an epidemic. It's not a pandemic, it's a syndemic. You know, it's a combination. What is killing people is the combination of all the other chronic health disease, chronic health problems. And the compilation, a syndemic, is when you have epidemic, you know, epidemic proportions of other epidemics. It's one epidemic on top of another epidemic. That's what a syndemic is. That's what COVID is. 
It is a syndemic of what's killing people. Insight and wisdom in there. Dr. Brown, I, again, I love this book and I'm grateful for, well, not only for your writing it, for the fact that I can make it available to my patients, for the, the insight I provide to me, because it's always great for the chiropractor to remind themselves of the immutable and undeniable truths of our profession and, and what that impact can have on our, our own lives, our patients' lives, and the, the influence we can have within the community. So I want to acknowledge, appreciate, and you know, express my gratitude to you for that. And I want to remind everyone, the link below, go grab a copy, put it in the waiting area, get multiple copies, share that information because our patients need to know and understand this. And beyond that, they need to integrate it. So I want to thank you. And the last question I want to leave with though is, uh, there are so many chiropractors out there that have, have a knowledge and insight and a wisdom as you do. You've taken your knowledge and you've put it into print. What would you suggest to the chiropractor who feels like, well, gee, you know, Brian said right at the beginning that that was one of the hardest things he had to do was to write that book. So if it's that hard and, and he's that bright, maybe I'm not going to be as uh, able to do that as he was. So um, I'll just, I'll jump ship and I'll, I'll just, you know, maybe um, just keep telling him, talk, tick, you know, I'm here at the table, that'll do. What would you say to the person who feels like maybe they can't write a book or feel like a book is overwhelming as to how it can be done and what value it will bring to them? Well, the good thing is I'm not that bright. So anyone can do it. <laughs> I'm just a little lucky, I guess, and, and persistent. Uh, you know what? This book took me over 12 years to write. Um, when I first had the concept of writing this book and getting it out there, I knew I had a story to tell like every chiropractor does. Anyone who's passionate about the chiropractic profession, they have a story in them that they have to share. It doesn't matter if it's the same story as anyone else that's written a book in chiropractic. There's always gonna be a different perspective, different stories, and it's got to, everyone's gotta write the book if they feel it's in them. So I started writing the book over 12 years ago and I would go days where I would just not stop writing and then I'd go months where I don't even open it. And then I would go days and write nonstop and then I would go months without writing it. And, you know, when I first started writing it, I'm like, could I even get a pamphlet out? Is it going to be five pages or 10 pages? I, I'm not even joking. I did not know if I was going to get more than 50 pages out in a book. I was constantly, I'm like going bigger print. How, how can I do this? And, you know, I, I don't know. At some point, I just put the book aside. Yeah, 350 pages. At some point, I just put the book aside. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I can do this. And I, I did tell enough people about it um, that... Uh, they kept me accountable. Like one of the senators that I used to take care of in California, he would always be asking me and his staff would be asking, how's the book coming? Some of my mentors in the profession were asking. So I'm like, I have to do the book. And then COVID hit. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, everything in this book, I know that it was always important what I was saying. And then with COVID, it became urgent. But the truth of the matter is it was always urgent. It just didn't seem urgent to me at the time. And at the same time, a publisher reached out to me and they, they did some research or whatever. And they said, you know, Dr. Stenzel, we've been doing research on you. We think you have a story to tell. Have you ever thought about writing a book? And I'm like, well, as a matter of fact, yes, I've been working on it for over a decade now. And he's like, well, we'll help you get it done. And so they took me through and I didn't hire any ghostwriters. I wrote every single page myself, but they took me through the process about how to get the book done, how to come up with chapter titles, what to put in it, how much writing to do every day. That was a lifesaver because I went from a 10, 11, 12 years of getting nothing done basically to writing another, because I was at 50,000 words, 40, 50,000 words before I went on with the publisher. After that publisher, I did another 50,000 words in under a year and got it done. And it became a I mean, I, I think it's a masterpiece. I didn't at first, I would go back and forth. I'm like, this book sucks. This book's awesome. This book sucks. This book's awesome. Because it's hard to read your own right, your own stuff, right? But now when I get all the feedback, I'm like, I'm so glad I did that. And it would have been more of a curse to have not done it. So for those people out there that have the book in them, you're doing more of a disservice by not getting it out. It's not that hard. Just start audio recording yourself. Get otter.ai, you know, just get something where you could record yourself and get it jotted down. If you have a little cash, hire a ghostwriter. There's lots of publishing companies out there that can help you get it done and they'll write it for you. Just give them the concept. They'll get it done. They'll do the research. There's always a way to do it. If it's in there, it could be done. And I know if I do write a second book, it will be a lot easier and it won't take 12 years. I'll get it done within three to six months. Exactly. And you will write another book, brother, because you have got a message beyond what you have in practice, even in business. And the insight and wisdom you bring in the way that you serve other practitioners as well in their growth. So I'm going to hold you accountable to 
to see that next book come out and serve uh, the profession as well. But it's a, it's a great insight. Everyone, you've got a story, you've got a message to share, and it is urgent because our communities need to shift the paradigm from the, the pain they are in, from the frustration they have, from the disillusionment that is ever present in their lives to the hope and the, the opportunity that chiropractic offers. Dr. Brian, I am grateful. I appreciate you. It's been wonderful connecting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you.